be designing a single posterior crown, number 18. We'll get the client name tech, and then we're going to select the crown we'll be working on. We've selected anatomic crown, material zirconia in this case, and then this is just a simple crown. We won't select anything here, no virtual gingiva, no thimble, and we'll have it pull to margin is the best way for the cervical adaptation, shade A1. Click OK, and then we'll go into design. Alright, so in this case we have scanned a triple tray. So first thing we need to do is orient the scan data so that it's facing the correct direction. Now with the triple tray, the scan of a, a physical impression, we've got this extra data blocking our, our view. So we'll actually cut that data away. So select straight through, and then I'm going to trace my data. Delete, and that should leave me with just the portion I want. Trim this just a little. Okay. Now we have just our pertinent data. Next step will be to trace our margin. Click with the middle mouse button, it'll set my point of rotation around the tooth, which will make it easier to trace the margin. Um, so I like to trace the margin roughly quickly and then go back and tweak all the details. Okay, so once I have a rough margin trace, then I'll zoom in and pull my points. If there's areas that are difficult to tell where the margin is, I'll turn sideways alternate between a sideways and top-down view to get my margin exactly where it goes. Now in this case you can see where the margin comes down and then the tooth drops. If I need more detail I'll click to add a point. And this was a physical impression, so there's a little bit of flash in some areas. That's what I'm working around. So once I have my margin traced, I'll zoom back out and make sure that everything makes sense. Sometimes when you get in too close, it's hard to tell. All right, that looks pretty good. From what I can tell, there's just one of abrupt spot right here. I'll fix that. All right, that looks good to me now. This area here is flash where it was subgingival, same thing here. 
So we'll hit next now. And then on my border, I, the border is this little green line. I want to reduce the horizontal all the way down. That's a thickness that it adds for a milling. And then I'm going to change my angle to 0.15. So what that does is put just a little shoulder that's pretty uh, anatomically shaped that comes off of the, the margin. The vertical would add a component here to the height. Well, I don't want to do that because it'll make the crown shape funny. And then below margin will actually drop your margin down lower, which we don't want to do either. So go to next. The software will auto-propose a design. You can see, especially, we picked a second molar here because it shows some of the difficulty here. I would go into advanced placement. I'll just talk about a couple of the options we have here in, in placement. Under the advanced tab, one is I like to look down my cord. In this case, our cusps pretty well aligned with the neighbors. But if they didn't, we can use our posterior shape tab to modify the cusp angles. So I like to do that first. And then the other options we have here is instant anatomic morphing to the opposing crown. So if you click on this and drag the crown around, it will actually cut the crown to the opposing. You see as I drag it up, it won't allow me to occupy the same space as the upper arch. I'm going to undo that, but if I, I grab that and drag it just a little, you can see how it's going to automatically compensate for the occlusion, which is a, a, also a nice tool. All right, the other option is to do it through cutting, but that uh, leaves rough spots. And then, of course, there's um, these simple movements that you can do as well. Aside from that, I think our design looks pretty good. We may, uh, we could rotate it just a little to the mesial if we wanted. Um, the red area here is where we're below minimum thickness, but that'll take care of itself here in the next one. So now under the free forming, first thing I like to do is look at our buckle emergence looks pretty good, uh, maybe slightly bulky. And then our, our lingual looks pretty good as well. We'll turn the opposing off. See, we've got a couple of high spots. First thing I'm gonna do is check my occlusal embrasures. I wanna make sure that they're symmetrical here and here. They really look pretty good. Then I'll check my embrasures in this dimension. Here I've got a little bit of a black triangle, uh, which I don't like, and then a little bit of gap here. So I'm gonna grab tooth parts, pull that up just a little bit. So now we have a nice symmetric embrasure here. I'm gonna back my jaw scan down so I can see through it. And now I'm gonna come over to freeform, add, remove. I'm gonna broaden that contact a little bit with the purpose of closing out that, that black triangle space. So we've closed that out, but we're a little over bulked. So now what I'll do, I'm going to smooth flatten, hold shift for an aggressive smooth. Turn my jaw back on. You see I've filled it out a little bit more, but I will selectively add that contact back. and then just smooth things out again. Okay, so that's how we can handle our contacts. And then the way this uh, proposal comes in, will often just look a little bulky by the margin. That red is our minimum thickness. 
and then I like to hit that hold shift, hit the remove button just to fix our occlusion so we don't have any high spots and then I'll smooth it because oops, I'll smooth it because it comes in a little um, excessive on the anatomy for most most uh, patients okay the other tool we have in here that is helpful is say we do over bulk our um, contact here and we've got it sticking through to the neighbor we'll go to adapt occlusal and prox so this is interproximal inter cut intersection and you can see it cut away to an exact so I'd like to cut there go back to freeform smooth flatten and hit it just slightly that way we have a nice broad contact that will adapt nicely to the neighbor but it's also smooth so it doesn't catch floss uh, so I, one thing I tell our designers is we don't necessarily want it to be a perfect match to the tooth we want a little better contact than what we'd have naturally a little broader just makes things easier okay and we're basically there but say we did have a cusp or something we want to change I want to go over one more feature here so we have these morphine tools which are really great and you can hold parts so if I say hold cusp tips say I just have it's a little bulky on this side I can, could squeeze it in that way. See when I hold cusp tips, what happens? I'll turn that off. And if I was trying to do the same thing, move it in, the cusp tips are going to move out of the, the functional um, groove there. So by locking in the cusp tips, it allows me to change just the profile without affecting anything else. Um, the other tools we have, hold equator, We'll keep this part from moving if I need to move a cusp tip. So if I want to pull that down, it keeps the rest of the crown from changing. All right, so we have got that done, and then again, just you can smooth flatten anything. That red is the minimum thickness, so it, it will the software will, will add that back. But we're basically done here now. And as a final check to look down the corridors make sure our cusps line up with the the neighbors and that all our embrasures are symmetrical here symmetrical here so that all looks pretty good check the crown from every angle and then we'll go next and it will go ahead and merge the restoration from here we'll right click save to file and we'll save it out as whatever we need to from here if a model needs to be created um, you could click click forward and, and move into the model creator